Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and a commander. This is the SIP wrap, the situation report. And uh, for those that are not familiar with DPA, uh, everything that is mapped on this mapping, which you can find on the D Defense Politics Asia website, you can also find the link in the descri description below. Everything is sourced. I don't make things up. Everything, there's a source for it. So, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, no make shit up so you know this and uh, this is going to be the, this is the most neutral platform and most uh, objective platform uh on reporting of the ukraine war so hopefully you will press the like, like and subscribe button and uh we're going to start off with some frontline changes report uh there's still a few more frontline changes since the frontline changes that was uh, published around 10 hours ago so uh, there's frontline changes over at uruzaine uh over at the where's this front adfk front uh, Krinky and Sokil. So, uh, no, so there's a few frontline change. So we go into Uruzaini first. Uh, so there, oh, sorry, uh, that's Donetsk front, not not at the FK front. Oh, so at uh, Uruzaini, uh, there is some frontline change. So uh, previously we have uh, reported that the Russians claim to have uh, taken and straightened the front line uh, over at Uruzaini as they continue to put pressure on the Ukrainians. However, uh, in the twist of uh, fate. The Ukrainian forces has been geolocated uh, to be attacked uh, in the southern part of Uruzaini. This invalidate the Russian claims showing that the Ukrainians actually retain uh, more control over the residential area in the southern part of Uruzaini. So which means that the Russian claim can only exert to only this field which clearly no one is going to be there. So this is, uh, this is the current situation, the frontline change over Uruzaini. Uh, there's another frontline change over at Krinky. So this is over at Kherson front. Uh, the Ukrainians have continued to hold this uh, bridgehead or beachhead over at this uh, southern part of the Dnipro River. And uh, there is a U Ukrainian uh, video showing that they have launched a FPV drone attack, of a first-person view uh, drone attack against Russian forces at this location, which means that the Russian forces have actually, at least taken part of this uh, area back uh, at Krinky. Well, because clearly they can infiltrate there means the Ukrainians are not there and the fact that they, the, the attack is by a drone not by a infantry it's not a skirmish means that uh, the Ukrainians cannot be uh, there at all which also invalidates uh, Surya Map's assertion uh, and I'm not sure who are who others that the Ukrainian forces have actually uh, attacked into uh, Kozachi Lahire in the migration from Krinky to Kozachi Lahire. This is actually inaccurate. I already mentioned in the previous reports that is this is very unlikely and that the and that the footage and the reason, the evidence that uh, he used was the flag at Kozachi Lahire. And I mentioned before, it's not the first time the Ukrainians planted flag with drones. So uh, the fact that no infantry is saw, saw at that Joe location means that it cannot be a Ukrainian troops over there. No, if you look at the Russians, uh, when they raise a flag, there is always infantry or soldiers or officers, uh, raising that flag and are uh, showing their physical presence. The Ukrainians, when they show only the flag, those are mostly, uh, only planted by drones, and it's also shown by themselves that they use drone to plant flags. So, uh, this just to disturb the U the Russians. They do not have a real presence over there. The last frontline change is over at Sokil, over at the ADFK front. And uh, there is some uh, major frontline change over at Sokil. Russian forces are located at this position, uh, which means that the Russians have taken massive positions uh, over on the eastern outskirts of Sokil, uh, which means that the front line is getting closer and closer with the Ukrainians probably still holding some of these three lines. Uh, holding back the Russians. There is a major entrenchment around here. So it's not going to be an easy uh, uh, easy capture uh, for the Russians if they are able to continue to advance. So these are the frontline changes report. And uh, so we'll go on to the uh, strategy and tactical reporting, the actual situation report. And I also want to highlight that uh, I will be clipping the frontline changes report uh, to be published separately because some people just don't click at the, on the zip wrap. So Please be understanding uh, <clears throat> the algorithm is broken by you. Uh, the YouTube algorithm is broken, so we just have to make do. And uh, it's just like, you know, I'm just like I'm fighting a war, just like the Ukrainians are fighting against Russians against an uh, uphill battle. This is what DPA have to face. It is what it is. And uh, so I will just continue to fight on. So uh, we go to move into the strategy and tactical reporting. And uh, first thing first, we go into the Kharkiv front. So uh, as per previously, I tried to, I want to use this mapping uh, to for the uh, for the uh, SIP wrap 
and uh, because we can see the relief mapping, but of course when it's needed, because we want to see the settlements and you know, some of this terrain uh, in real, in satellite imagery, we will just switch here and there. Uh, over at the Kharkiv front, at the Kharkiv front, uh, as usual, there is a uh, multiple sec uh, sectors around here. Uh, the Russian forces over at this uh, Kozache Lopan uh, or Zolokiv uh, sector have launched another attack on uh, Raniv. So uh, this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry in the two days report, the latest report today, and that there's a shelling reported at uh, Konstantinivka. So the current situation uh, remains like this. There's still no news regarding Koptivka. I just it just felt like you know nothing is happening over there. There was a misreporting by Raiba. So uh, we will continue to monitor. Joe location of uh, Lancer attack on the Ukrainian truck uh, just off Duvanka. And uh, there's also another Joe location of a Lancer hitting a, a multiple launch rocket system of Zulu Kiev. So this this uh this shellings and uh, attacks just f have a sense that the Russians wanted to you know, open yet another sector uh to to capture Udi and Kozachi, uh, Kozacha Lopan. This Udi and Kozacha Lopan was previously um, the Russia's uh, stronghold when the Khaki front previously existed. So I got a feeling that um, no, maybe the Russians, once they find a good opportunity, they might try uh, to you know, launch an attack again. So over at this uh, Lipsy sector, so this is a Lipsy sector, and uh, this is Lipsy. Uh, so the Russian forces continue to attack in the area of Lipsy. In the previous, uh, either the SIP rep or it could be the briefing, I have mentioned that the, there's a high chance that the Russians are no longer over in the northern part of Lipsy. And uh, indeed, I'm now proven correct because my analysis is correct because of the geolocation. Uh, so uh, based on the geolocation of Russian airstrikes on Ukrainian position, uh, which means that this at least these two positions that it has already been retaken by the Ukrainian forces, as uh, these are listed as strongholds getting airstrike by the Russian forces, and according to the Russian Defense Ministry, they also mentioned about fighting at Kliboke, and uh, this this is consistent uh, with this development that the Ukrainians are now on the counter to recapture uh, Kliboke, and uh, the Russians are now nowhere close to this position. So for those that don't really like this view, I can show you, you know, this is the settlement now it looks like. Uh, so the Ukrainians have taken most of this location. They are now pushing out. The, uh, but however, according to the Ukrainians, the Russians are still attacking. I think that this is just projection. Uh, they are projecting the, the, the Rus the, their own attack as Russian attacks. And uh, this actually plays into whatever the Russians wanted be anyway, because uh, this is... Uh, no, this... Like I mentioned before, the Kharkiv offensive has always, to me, has always been just a diversion. Right at the, the first day, even before the, the, the Kharkiv offensive even happened, I already mentioned before that uh, it makes no sense for the Russians to actually launch a Kharkiv offensive to capture the Kharkiv uh, city. And if you can look at the situation around here, uh, the Ukrainians managed to take the high ground. Uh, this, this, there's a 200 meter uh, height around here. So this this high ground currently is under Ukrainian control <coughs> after they probably overrun it in the counterattack. Russian forces uh, now airstrike it. <coughs> so the Russians probably still have uh, other high grounds around here, probably along these ridges uh, overlooking this river. I don't think the Russians are on the other side of the river. I just, uh, they don't, it don't make sense. You no, know, it's just not possible to cross over uh, to make a, you know, a safe defensive position. So, you can see the current situation around, uh, you know, the, the different mapping you know, does different things. You can see the forest uh, much more clearly. So we will continue to monitor uh, the situation over at this sector. Uh, there, there's also shelling being reported at Ruki, uh, Rushki Tishki. Haven't, I haven't seen this name for a long, long time, Rushki Tishki. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, there's some shelling around here. It's like, you know, meeting an old friend, long time, you know, we haven't met for two years. It's like, oh, it's you. I remember you, you know, during the Kharkiv front when it was still known as the happy front. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> not so happy right now. Uh, so over at this, uh, uh, Stadisia sector, uh, have, it now has expanded over to the Ternova region. So according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the 26th of May, Russian forces have attacked Ternova or at least in the region of Ternova. This, this might be a possibility that the Russians have taken Ibipsky. 
or it could be the Russians actually launched an attack across the border from Sereda uh, into Tonova. So uh, there is not a lot of information uh, uh, regarding this other than just a mention of the battle uh, at the village of uh, you no know, attack towards Tonova. So we just have to wait and see you know, uh, whether there's further information uh, no, about this. Uh, there is a geolocation of a Lancer hitting a Ukrainian tank at the Tonova, and I'm not sure if this is what the Ukrainian Defense Ministry is talking about. Uh, so like they, they repelled a Lancer by hitting its tank on the Lancer. There's a possibility, you know, you're throwing a tank at the Lancer definitely will destroy the Lancer. So uh, fighting reported as Theresia again on the 26th of May, uh, this according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, is a little, it's starting to get a little hard to imagine that Theresia is still not captured by the Russian forces. But no, we do not know what we do not know. So we just have to continue to wait. Maybe the Ukrainians, you know, there's a, no, there's a, you no know, seven men, you no know, like you no know, or four men, you no know, like like hell diver, you know, four superheroes holding back studies here, you know, against the onslaught of orcs in shovels with shovels, you no. Know, so you no, know, there is a heroic stand over studies here. I'm not sure. So maybe that's the case. Over at the Voschan sector, at the Voschan sector, uh, fighting continues to be raged. Uh, over at Voschan, there is a Joe location of Russian forces. Uh, over at this corner along the highway uh, confirming russian presence uh at this region of uh the city so uh, i'm not sure if the this view has any meaning uh yeah it's not very a lot you know you simply see the river better at the first river uh so it's important to note that there is a river there you know the river dictates the tactics around here so um otherwise there the, there's, there's heavy clashes around here ukrainian defense ministry russian defense ministry bo both reported russians are attacking whilst the russians on in today's report talk about ukrainian counter-attack so uh the ukrainians are probably attacking uh through these salient around here they're trying to fight back the russians whilst the russians are trying to expand control uh, in this region here. So uh, we will just continue to monitor. Uh, it's very hard to interpret the situation right now because uh, there's a lot of folk of war and uh, urban warfare is going to be slow if both sides are very committed. So just like the Battle of Bakhmut, you no know, Battle of Mariupol, uh, it's all, you know, Battle of Popasna is all very slow because, you know, when two sides are very, you know, engaged, uh, you know, the 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 they they gonna take a long time you know in the bedroom. So over at uh, at the Kupians front, uh, at the Kupians front, Russian forces are currently attacking in multiple directions in Sinkivka, Petropolivka, and uh, Ivanivka region and towards Step uh, Stepova, Novoselivka. According to the Ukrainians, they say that the situation over at Petropolivka was is very tense. Uh, so, uh, yeah, whatever that's supposed to mean. Uh, so. So that is the situation. Uh, there is major news, although, uh, in this area here. Ivanivka ha is now captured by the Russian forces. This is reported by both Raiba and the Russian Defense Ministry. And uh, this, and based on the U Russian mapping, uh, this the, Rus the front line now looks like this, with the Russians taking the rest of Ivanivka. After the initial report in the previous SIBRAP <clears throat> that the Russians have taken the southern, uh, most of Ivanivka and the north, uh, northern part of Kaislivka. So now the battle is <coughs> is moving towards uh, Stepova, Novoselivka, as the Russians continue to, uh, to you know, press on their attack. Uh, Stepova, Novoselivka is a very small place, so I don't expect this to hold very long unless the Russians want to you know, relax again. So <coughs> that's all from the Kupians front. <clears throat> We're moving on in the Svetovay front. There is a multiple situation uh fighting around this area here. There's fighting reported at Berestovay, Stemetkivka. There is uh, some frontline change uh south of this location over at um not sure what's that place yet. <clears throat> uh there's fighting rope at uh, Novo Yehorivka. Uh there is also Ukrainian counterattack at Novo Vodian, Russian attack towards Gregivka and uh, Russian attack towards Druze Lyubivka. So this is the strategic situation over at Sviatovay. And uh, we go into details over at the Berestovay situ uh, uh, situation. Russian, uh, I, I used the wrong, 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 wrong icon. Sorry, my bad. So the Russian Defense Ministry announced uh, on the 26th of May that they have captured Berestovay. However, this is disputed uh, by Raiba. 
and they say uh, according to Riba, they say that the footages only that appears online only show only show partial control. This is the current situation, uh, the current you no know, DPS position as well that the battle story is still not fully captured yet. However, just like Riba's uh, analysis, <clears throat> full capture it, you know cannot be ruled out because it is a very small village. It's only left with one more street around here. This is just one more street. So the Russian uh, Russian capture uh, over at Berestovay is possible, but we cannot verify this. So tentatively, I can only put this as an announcement because even Raiba cannot confirm it. So we can just have to wait. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry continued to report the fighting uh, around here, but it was not reported on the 27th. So this is very important. Uh, so we will just wait and see uh, over at uh, Berestovay. Further south, there is oh, so this place is called Masil Zarivka. So uh, at the there's a geolocation of Russian forces just just off Masil Zarivka, confirming Russian presence uh, around this area, invalidating Ukrainian mapping a little bit. So uh, we will continue to monitor uh, this area here. Uh, so further south, uh, Novo Yerivka, there is fighting reported here on, uh, by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the twenty sixth. Geolocation uh, just off. Uh, Kamazinevka showing the Russian forces are advancing a little bit, uh, not much. So they're just pushing down the tree line. Ukrainians are probably have very strong, uh, you no know, resistance around this area here. I want to look at the relief mapping. <clears throat> so uh, this is basically the Russians going downhill. So there's a there's this a valley. The Ukrainians clearly you no know, have some you no know, defensive position probably around here, as this is where the hill is. And uh, the, they, are, they are overlooking this area here. So the Russians pushing down south, uh, down the reef towards the valley. Yeah, it's gonna, just going to be a, bit, a little bit dangerous. Uh, however, the fighting here was reported as the Ukrainians are reportedly attacking towards Novo Vodian. Uh, the Ukrainians have the high ground around here. But the Rush, the according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, Russians are still attacking towards uh, Krakivka. So somehow the Russians are also attacking. It, this could be the same fighting, the same battle. They are just clashing. I'm not sure. So we just have, have to wait because the Ukrainians uh, also say about Druze uh, Lubivka. So I, I'm, it could be a case where this attack refers to Druze Lubivka and the clashes just off Novo Vodian uh, is being referred to as Gregivka. So this makes sense. So uh, we will just have to continue to you know wait. You no, know, and and see, you know, if anyone can give us a clearer front line, uh, but of course, I will continue to you know map it as per the locations that the Ukrainians have announced. Uh, there's a geo location of Lancer attack over Nevsky. So now we are already you know moving into the Kremlin front. So let's talk Kremlin front. So uh, Kremlin front in the northern flank, Russian forces are attacking towards Nevsky, no, uh, Novo Sadove, and Terny. Uh, the this geo location is a Lancet attack on the tank, so there's a, a right in the middle of the settlement. The Russians are pushing, uh, trying to capture uh the you know, to hold this to take this line. Uh, this river I forgot Zerebets River I think this river is called Zerebets River. Yeah, Zerebets River. So the Russians are trying to you know get to this line and uh, create a much more stronger defense line. Uh, the, the Ukrainians do refuse to let them have it. Uh, so. Not sure if that's the best decision, um, because the Ukrainians would would just stretch their own logistic and make them uh, make it harder for themselves to defend as well. So, whatever it is, this is their strategy. You no, know, you just have to respect it. Uh, Kremlin front also there is a fighting reporter at Grigorivka, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Ukrainians probably attacking uh, within the forest region. Uh, so that's about it along the river region here not important so we move into the Sivas front so at, at the Sivas front Russian forces are attacking at Bilohorivka Sperne towards Vimka and at Ruzulivka so this is the current situation uh, here uh, the strategic situation at Sivas uh, but in particular the, the there's a major change over at Bilohorivka over at Bilohorivka Russian forces has been geolocated right in the middle of Bilohorivka settlement. Uh, they basically you know, uh, you know, poke something you no know, long long into uh, Bilohorivka, and uh, however this is not going to not going to be sustainable. If you look at the relief mapping, the, this entire this is a hill, and there is another you no know, 
bigger knoll over there. There's another high ground. And basically, all of them can overlook Bilohorivka and they can fire upon the Ukraine, the Russians if this in view. Uh, of course, you no. Know, Looking at relief mapping can be, of course, deceiving, you no, know, because there can be a lot of trees, it can be you no know, buildings, and it can be stones, rocks, and that is blocking your views. Um, so, so sometimes I also don't over, you no, know, don't overdo it in the relief mapping. However, uh, it is just important to note that there is some uh, high ground difference. Uh, but if you look from the set satellite, you just can't see. It's just a Milky Way. It's just a lot of stars, you no, know, on the on the space of green. So, uh, so that's the current situation. Uh. As you, if you zoom in, you can see that it's just a lot of buildings. There's some forests around here. So the Ukrainians have some, uh, I'm not sure is this, I don't think these trenches. Yeah, so some some rivers, you no know, stream system. So the trees will just obstruct your view even if you're on high ground. So that's why, you know, uh, don't over, uh, I mean, high high grounds are important, but you no, know, sometimes it does, it's not what you imagine, you know, it's not, it's not a computer game. So anyway, we move on away from the Sivas front. Uh, we move into the Bakhmut front. Uh, the, at the Bakhmut front, uh, there is, uh, there is a few things. I think uh, on, on top there's nothing. Okay, let's let's. Okay, we can stage. We can put everything in. So Russian forces are attacking. Uh, not at Novi. They are attacking. Novi is over here. The Russians are not attacking over there. There is, however, geo location. Uh, of, uh, airstrike at Novi, but otherwise the Russians are actually attacking. Uh probably through the forest towards Chasif here. There's attack in the area of Ivaniske. They are still fighting being reported at Klishevka and Andriyevka. So the, the Ukrainians continue to report that the Russians are attacking at Klishevka region. There is still, still no confirmation of Russians capture of Klishevka or Andriyevka. There is no, there is no clear uh, evidence that the Russians have taken the high ground around Klishevka. As you can see, this is a massive slope very very big slope 200 meters in the in the space of like what one kilometer almost one kilometer so around this 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 uh distance from the top of the hill to the south is only half a kilometer so this is a rather steep uh hill and uh the ukrainians from this position would have a very strong you know high ground advantage against a village without without this high ground klishevka cannot be held so the, there is still no evidence of the Russians taking the high ground like this and taking Andreevka as per claim by the Russian Defense Ministry until this moment, DPS position is that it's still not captured. It's just an announcement by the Russian Defense Ministry. And, you, and as you can see, the announcement was on which day? 23rd. We're now on the 27th. Five days in, we still have no evidence. Um, and uh, Klishevka was on the 22nd. So they are both is five days in. So... We have to be objective about this. That's why, you know, you watch DPA. You That's why you follow DPA's mapping. The mapping is now public. It's free. You no, know, so, you know, you can fact check yourself, you know, fact check yourself. And, um, and it's also important to note, differentiate between reporters like me, that we are reporting, and sources. Sources are the people who have information, they have contacts on the ground. So, you don't, you cannot refer to a reporter's, uh, Thing and say that I'm wrong because the, the reality is all reporters are looking at the same piece, same sources. So it's just an interpretation. So some interpreter uh, they just believe the Russian defense ministry and say that it's captured, and they say it's captured. Then they just draw the mapping, whatever they like. Uh, so for the current situation, for at least this area here, uh, is rather critical that I cannot draw in this way. It's not like in the early days of the war, everything is a blur. Then we try to quickly map out where the Russians are because nobody knows where the Russians are because they just you know driving all over you know, Ukraine. But or during the Ukrainian counteroffensive in 2022, where they they take massive ground in the Kharkiv region after the in the in the Balaklia offensive, or the Kherson offensive, then we have to draw the border in the, on the estimate. But in, in such a close battle when things are very, very uh, tense. Uh, frontline change are very, very difficult, very, very slow. And we can actually map it more accurately. And that if we start to draw you know, like this and say that you no, know, it's Russian control, then what's the point? Because that is not corroborated. And then after that, you have to roll back. You know. So we try to do our best. And uh, you, you can also you know, just make it a habit. Always fact check. And uh, if you find any 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 you know, people that you have been following, always have their 
information invalidated just stop following the person stop you no know, consuming fake news you no know? so that's all from the Bakhmut front uh, over the New York front uh, at the New York front Russian forces are fighting in these two regions uh, in New York region of course uh, it's important to know about New York is that we do not know where the where the offensive actually you know is or the attack is is it coming from the east southeast or is it from the south uh, we have no idea so uh, this is just something that you take, need to take note. And there is also fighting reported at Oleg Centropil on the 26th. So Russians attacking uh, in these two regions, I don't, I think these are you no know, just probings, you no, know, just don't have to take it as an offensive. Just south of uh, south of the New York, there is a Russian airstrike on the Ukrainian position. I believe these are, these are guided bomb. So we will continue to monitor uh, the situation. Yeah, someone reminded me, stop saying that. So I have to remember, stop monitoring the situation. <laughs> no, so over at the DFK front, uh, a lot of things happening. So I have to break into half in the northern northern flank of the DFK front. Russian forces are pushing towards a uh, what's the place called again? Ka uh, Kalinove. Uh, at Kalinove, Russians are attacking Novo Oleksandrivka. Ukrainians are counterattacking at uh, Ocheretine and Novo Oleksandrivka. So there is a clash around here. Russian forces are making progress. Uh, towards progress which is a uh, progress towards progress which is an irony uh and uh or, then then the attack in in the, in the west of Orcheretine towards Sokyu uh Ukrainians counter attack at Solovyovy Russians are trying to push out as well Russians are pushing towards Novoselivka Persia so this is the strategic situation over at the northern part of the ADFK front and uh so there is some major changes as well uh, in this region here, I, I the most of these areas here are very stagnant. Uh, so I, I can show you this area here. These are stagnant, and uh, the the hot front is over here. These are this is the hot side. The this a, this area here is also cold. So this is the main push. This is actually where the arrow is. So this is where the Russians are pushing, and they are pushing the most heavily, one of the most heavily defended places, uh, over in uh, this area here. So. So the, there's a lot of frontline changes around the Sokyo region, and now I need to change the mapping to the satellite so you can see the the, the entrenchments. You can see that uh, the Ukrainians have heavy entrenchment around here. There's another one here, another one here, and at, at Yehevnivka. There's one over here, and the Russians have captured it. Basically taken this heavy entrenchment around here, north of it, and the Russians have is now closing towards Sokyo with this uh geo location this front line change and they are pushing out of Slovyovy finally after you no know, reports about clashing over Slovyovy since weeks already so Russians are now making progress uh, in this area but it's going to be super slow uh, like I mentioned multiple times already Sokyo is very heavily defended so I don't think uh, the Russians are able to make fast progress it's going to be slow but it's going to be devastating because Ukrainians know that it's heavily defended, so they will send more men to it, which means that the Russians can take advantage of this you no know, logical uh, fallacy that because it's more defendable, so you should defend it, and the Russians can just you no know, air strike and or uh, TOS one strike or the thermobaric strike it uh, into Smithereen or you no know, Chako. So it's extremely sad, but this this is war in the southern flank. Uh, of the ADFK front, Russian forces. Okay, let me. We have talked about Nova Selika Persia. Okay, we, ah, yeah, we can fit in somewhat a little bit. Okay, Russian forces. Uh, after the full capture of Umanske, they continue to try to push out, I guess, in this area. And the Ukrainians are trying to push them back. They are now counter attacking Umanske. Russians are pushing for Yasno Brodivka. Uh, the Russians have also announced the capture of Netolove. And the Russian, uh, the Russian source Raiba has corroborated it, uh, through, through the fact that you no, know, the Russian forces have raised flag around there, so Netolove is finally under Russian control, at least based on the Russians' information. But on the Ukrainian side, they have not acknowledged this yet. So, this is merely a Russian claim, but uh, most likely is captured because the the front line front lines has clearly shown that, um. Yeah, it's mostly taken and uh, that is very hard for the Ukrainians to have any presence around there. So Russians are still pushing out around this area here. There is still fighting re being report reported at Netolovy according to the Russian uh, Russian uh, sources. 
basically they finished clearing the operate uh, the settlement there and russians are pushing over in the area of uh, nevelsky so not sure about the nevelsky thing uh, there's not much information the in interesting thing also is that the ukrainians uh, still have this salient around ne uh, nev Nevelsky. There is totally no information uh, for a long time now over the situation in Nevelsky. It's a very flat ground as you can see. So not much, uh, not much around here, but the Ukrainians are defending it either way. So that's all. We move into the Donetsk front. So this, this is the Donetsk front. At the Donetsk front, Russian forces are attacking at the battle of Krasnohorivka, Yogyivka, Towards Baraskovievka, Konstantinivka, Ukrainians are continuing their counter-attack over at Volodymyrivka. Russians are attacking Staromayovsky, Uruzhany, and Makarivka. So, one arrow, another arrow, and uh, another arrow. You can see this is the three main push over at the Donetsk front. And uh, over at the Krasnohorivka, there is some uh, significant change based on Russian mapping. Russians have taken uh, all of the... Uh, southern uh, neighborhoods the residential neighborhoods according to russian mapping and they are advancing uh, in the northeast trying to flank the north uh, of krasnohorivka so but this is russian claims no this is not corroborated we will just continue to monitor uh if the russians able to you know uh take the northern part the uh, yeah then you can clearly see that this entire uh, the rest of Krasnohorivka will be extremely you know, tense or difficult to hold which might result in a re uh, redrawal but yeah it's still long long way from there it's not going to be so fast uh, the Ukrainians are very determined on holding Krasnohorivka so the, uh, the battle will just go on for quite some time I believe at least two months so uh, of Georgivka they're still fighting being reported here uh, despite Russian seems to claim all of it the <clears throat> situation at the Konstantinivka region or Paraskovievka, uh, Par 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 Novo Mihalivka region is a bit weird. Russians are pushing Paraskovievka. They are pushing towards Konstantinivka. However, we still have reports of fighting at Novo Mihalivka. According to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the 27th, which is the latest report, I'm not sure where they are referring this. Maybe it's the north. Maybe they are referring to the north of Novo Mihalivka. Well, so whatever it is, we just wait. And uh, Ukrainians, interestingly, really is still pushing the uh, Volodymyrivka. So, so this is uh, 20, 22nd, 25th, 26th. You can see that uh, there is a consistent try from the Ukrainians to push towards Volodymyrivka. Let's just wait. No, let's just wait. And I will not say no, continue to monitor. Russians are pushing Pashastivka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry on the 26th, but no, not on the 27th. So, the, yeah, so just a one-off attack around here okay so now Veliko Novosilka the Veliko Novosilka uh, situation is a bit interesting Russians are attacking you know, and taking the entire western part of Staromayovsky they are making an attack towards Makarivka uh, they also supposedly taken the entire southern southern side but geolocations have uh, invalidated it which shows Ukrainians actually counter-attack and uh, retake or actually you know invalidates Russian claims so uh, the battle for these twin uh, settlements continue. Russians are still pushing. Ukrainians are very reluctant to give up the settlement. They are trying their best to hold it. Uh, Uruzani and Stadomayovsky is very flat right now. No, it's one of the most bombarded places in the Ukraine war. So we will continue to monitor. Uh, you see, I say it again. Ah, yeah. So that's it for this area. And we move into the Zaporizhia front. Zaporizhia city... At the Zaporizhia front, uh, the situ the, there's only news over at the Orykiv sector right now. Uh, Russian forces are attacking in the area of Robotine and Malatomashka. At the Malatomashka, there is fighting reported on the 26th. Uh, the Russians are still trying somehow in this area, but the front line is not no, not clear. There's still, uh, some, still uh, some kind of fog of war, so we'll just wait uh, and uh, not monitor. Uh, we move into... Kherson front also uh, at the Kherson front uh, there is fighting in this area here Russian forces shout Vesele Kyahinka they are attacking Krinky and there is a front line change over at Krinky with the Russian forces seems to have uh, reduced the zone of control of the Ukrainians as Russian forces are geolocated over here getting hit by FPV drones so Ukrainians uh, 
are still you know holding crinky for some unknown reasons so we just wait and see how this develops and uh, that's it so this is the sip wrap for the day of the situation report for the day of 834 for the 27th of may press the like button subscribe uh, 35 minutes you know we, we are we are we are commanders no 35 minutes report standard no that's what you do no and i'll see you guys in the next update